Guten Tag, meine Soldaten. I am Lois, am your Field Marshal of Wehrmacht Gaming, and today we're going to start a new series. Um, I'm playing Hearts of Iron 4 with the Rise of Nations mod. It's, honestly, it's a very underrated mod. You can start out in, like, 1910 and play all the way to 2060, or you can start in the Millennium Dawn, the beginning of the Cold War, in the middle of the Cold War, the Gathering Storm, at the beginning of World War II. So... There's a lot of potential with this, and it lets you play through 150 years of history. And as you can see, we're going to be playing the good old US of A today. And my goal is by the end in 2060 to control the entire world. So we'll be able to slowly build up, expand, take nation after nation. I'm going to be doing a fascist America run through. Um, if anyone wants any other nations, leave it in the comments. I'll say it throughout the series. That way... We can get some different nations going, hopefully get this mod out there, because it's an amazing mod and deserves all the support it can get, honestly. I haven't seen a mod really this ambitious yet. Um, it includes expert AI in it, which makes the AI better, and we're going to mess with the options here real quick. So, this one, um, types of army and whatnot, so we'll put it to random. That way, they can kind of just build whatever they want. I don't want them to min-max. I don't want them to, um, you know, put anything like that. And then this one, historical. Do -do, to build units more historically and predictably. Yeah, so random. Anything can go. They can design their divisions however they want. And then the difficulty, this changes, like, their dynamic stuff. So we'll go into the advanced configuration for that. And we're not going to make it so that nearby countries are harder. That, to me, just seems a little um, dumb. We will turn dynamic of defense to medium, though. Which means as they get closer to dying out, they'll gain bonuses. Um, as they get closer to capitulation, no attrition reduction. Because to me, that's just... I don't agree with it at all. And then here, we can do make Germany more aggressive, make Spain more neutral and stuff like that. But the one I like to do is random generic AI nation ideologies. That way the minor nations like Mexico, Peru, you know, Argentina, all of them, they can pick whatever ideologies they want over the course of the game. So with that, we will exit that. And then obviously do to do this if you guys want to read it and we'll set up our start so i'll go with my normal start which instantly you want to start going for early support you also want to get your oil production up right away and then engineering's really where it's at in the early game in this you can get that advanced research speed and then we'll assign our civilian factories and i just have a system because of ocd and it's just the system I've decided to stick with. It usually works out okay, but if you're expecting a min-max, do not come to... Don't, don't look at me for a min-max. It's, it's not going to be... This isn't the playthrough for that. But I start, I want to max out all the infrastructure. Because the Americans, we just... As the USA, we have the factories to do it. It increases your build speed, your supplies throughout the entire country... And it also increases your amount of resources, which will get you more trade, which will get you even more factories. Because the more resources you have, the more likely people are to trade with you going off of relations as well. But in general, having more resources makes it, from what I know, more likely for them to trade with you. But that's also if the AI just picks the nations they favor the most, then we'll be done for. And as you can see, this is a 1910 start because the Philippines, um, they don't have independence. And I don't look forward to giving anyone independence. We are going to own the entire world. I did try this with the No Resistance mod, not because I don't, like... Not because I'm not, like, afraid of resistance. I loved the old system. The old system for resistance was beautiful, um how you had to move your troops around to quell resistance in different provinces and actually assign your own divisions to garrison areas to stop it. But with the new resistance mechanics, they just kind of take an arbitrary amount of your manpower and stuff like that. And I found it to be quite cancerous because in the old games, once you declared peace and everything, you could slowly crush all the resistance, quell it, and have no resistance left over in your areas. 
in the new system, you could own a region for like 20 years and still be fighting massive amounts of resistance, which I guess can be accurate, but the thing is, is it's just... It's such an on-its-own mechanic, and it's so kind of jank that I haven't really found it working that well. Like, I, I personally dislike it. The new system to me is just in all means inferior to the old one of moving divisions around. And I thought it was kind of entertaining to have to, you know, design, oh, this is going to be my um, resistance quelling division, so we're going to put cavalry in it, we're going to put MPs, small units of cavalry that I can recruit, garrison in areas, and they'll just move around and suppress resistance. That was fun. This new one, I was playing as France one time on my own, and I offered a vote to the African colonies to gain freedom because, you know, they can join France and be a part of the nation and it backfired completely. So it was in like 1939 when I offered it before I went to war with Germany to try and consolidate because I figured it would be a good move. They all declined and then within a year I had nations breaking out into open rebellion, so open civil war, which I guess is a cool mechanic that they added. They should have just kept that maybe in the old system. I would have loved that, where, like, if you don't manage your resistance, one province at a time will slowly rise up. So, like, say, you know, we invade Canada and we don't manage the resistance up here by Alaska too well, then this state rises up and then that makes the resistance worse across the country and make it, like, a domino effect sort of thing. So if you can put all the dominoes back in place before they all fall down then you can be fine but if not then they'll just spiral out of control that would have been really neat that would have been a cool system to see um it's not what we have but that's personally for me that would have been a good mix of the two this one though i lost literally literally all of my manpower as france to resistance that just ticked away like there was there was nothing i could do about it and it was just really disheartening and immersion breaking for me because i mean y you're helpless at that point there's there's nothing you can do to stop all the rebellions the resistance stuff like that because it goes off of your manpower and equipment and if you don't have enough equipment they just say well you can't manage the rebels you're done for and it's not like oh you have enough you know it's not like oh they're underfunded or something like that it's just oh no not enough equipment stockpiled? Yeah, you're just not going to manage the rebels at all. You can design divisions with better suppression in the new system, but they just don't work the best. I also have a way I build my fleets every time, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, so that with man the guns, these coastal submarines, I like to put mines on them. So what I can do there is take my coastal subs and put them on mine laying and mine all of the waters around my nation. So all of my sea zones I'll have a lot of dominance in unless they start building tons of minesweepers. Hold up. We'll go for... We always want to go for political power first. So debates in the U.S. Congress and then we'll start organizing our armies. But, um... I do want a large navy. But... I usually, I make the submarines, you have the mine layers that are for zone control and protecting your own ports, and then the rest of my submarines, I turn into like 50 sub merchant convoy killers, and with 50 submarines, we can sink battleships and stuff like that if they show up, or destroyers, I can usually outgun them, and I produce so many because I set very large production numbers on my subs that they just get wrecked. Here's this, the Dervish War, if you guys want to read this. Um, I actually think I normally click through it, so I'll read it real quick. Uh, for over ten years now, the Dervish state, led by Muhammad Abdullah Hassan, nicknamed by the, his English foes the Mad Mullah, although he is neither mad nor a mullah, what has, with his Dervish troops, successfully defeated British attempts at crushing the Dervish state, which arose in British Somaliland in 1900 due to successfully repulsing the British Empire in four military expeditions, forcing the British to retreat to the coast. It has gained world renown in the Muslim world and even in the West to an extent. So Muslim rebels whooping Britain's butt. In the 1900s. Huh. I guess the West never learned some lessons. <laughs> like messing with um 
Muslim guerrilla fighters. Something we have never learned, and I don't know if we ever will. Oh! The Kingdom of France and Republic of France went to war. This is unique. This normally doesn't happen, so... The monarchy is just going for it already. Alright. That's cool and interesting. On the... I forget what these ones do. Ron, early wars. Wars, displo, two, three. I usually go for this one. Stability minus 10%. Now, one of the times I clicked that option and I instantly went into a civil war like France, and I had no clue what had just happened. So that is one of the things with the mod, but I don't know if that's a scripting error because I have other mods. But... Overall, I will say this mod's pretty solid. And as you can see, my focus tree... Oh man, there's no way it'll last till 2060. Well, they have this unique mechanic. You'll see it when it comes up. But, um... Their force is on the field. Um... Basically, what happens is, I think, 1936, 1930, this tree switches over to the World War II tree, and it, like, resets. Now, the only thing I can see there, and I think they should fix it, because I think it might be a potential issue, is if you rush research slots. What were the stomps? If you rush research slots um, down these trees, you can rush the research slots again, and then end up in a game in a situation where in your game you have like 10 research slots and can research everything even if it's ahead of time constantly so that is one potential way you can like chink the mod i know on one of my own playthroughs i was getting up there once and it was all right like i, I didn't like the feeling i don't know for me it was just too much like you wouldn't have that, obviously. Um, we'll turn these off. That way they're not always popping up on me. Especially because I want to do this more roleplay from what the American Empire would do. I also have no uh, experience for the division designers on. That's just because in real life the military doesn't need you know, tons of combat experience to redesign a single unit. They can do it in peace times without anything going on. And we'll turn the the regulated press on. That'll be one of our first steps. Oh, my bad. Hopefully you guys could have paused on the international explosion. I just, all the pop-ups I generally click through. I'll try not to for your guys' sakes, but... So that one was an accidental. My bad. But essentially what we're going to do here is we're planning on our first conquest is aiming for the United Mexican States. Um, we're going to push south. I want to go south into South America, Mexico, and everything. Because of the Monroe Doctrine, we should have a free hand in all of Latin and South America. World War One does normally kick off in this mod, like normal. Um, it's gone many ways. I've seen the Axis win, I've seen the Russians win, I've seen no World War One. I've seen... Islamic world versus democratic world world war one so it all just kind of depends and we'll go conservative I'll take the political power hit to get the construction speed up to get more of these um, infrastructures completed early on Canada under the British Empire so if we go the alliance is already in so you've got the Entente of oil extraction and then more encryption hold up so we're going to go for improved oil drilling, and I don't know if those are bugs too, but I mean you can get your oil up before the years for them are essentially set out. Only two steps though, so I think they might come back and fix it, or they might be working on other bigger issues. But yeah, so the Entente, it's in a bad spot, because France is in a civil war, and that's half the Entente. And then you've got Austria and the Germans, and if the Kingdom of France wins the civil war, then the French are in for a rough time. Oh, the Brits are at a civil war. Where's the other British people? Oh, they're in a civil war with the Dervish state. Okay. So they'll probably lose out eventually just to Britain's sheer enormous weight of manpower. And then in this one... Oh, here you guys can read this. Um, Long time Mexican president. 
Porfirio Diaz has supposedly won the election, although there remains a huge controversy over whether or not the elections were rigged or not as the Maduro campaign met fierce resistance from the Diaz regime. Shortly before the election, he was arrested on the charges of inciting a rebellion and may have noted election fraud at the polls. That's suspicious. And then the first passenger's flight landing in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf, after a nine-hour flight, the Zeppelin LZ-7 has completed the first ever passenger flight by an aircraft. It will re begin regular services this fall. This is the future. Um, my bad. Let's see what we want next. Mines. Let's see. Decrease federal power and then stability. We'll try and make Alaska a state first. But, um, yeah, so in the French Civil War, the Kingdom of France is definitely getting the bad side of things. Um... And they're fielding more manpower. And they can call on the Russians if they need it. So I think the Republic of France will win eventually. And then China's invading Tibet. Usually, the last few playthroughs I've had, I've watched China go into a uh, civil war with the Republic of China. Minor restrictions and then major restrictions. Yeah, no, these aren't what we want. We can't censor the press. So we'll go to our cabinet. Um, does anyone give us infrastructure build speed? That's where I'm looking. And there we go. The administrative gains. I want that infrastructure build speed. That way we can get our, um, all of our infrastructure up quicker. And once we get all that up, we'll be able to start building our civilian factories and then on to our more militaristic expansion options for our economy. Which is what I'm really looking for. Um, how far down are we through it already? We're already down to Virginia, which is really good. Making really good progress. Communication systems, so we'll get recon. And then communication systems here, we will get... Mm, it'll take, like, two years, but I want that research speed one. I want to start radioactive materials right away, because down this tree... You get the atom bomb, as normal, uh, and you get intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles. So you can get ballistic missiles via this tree. So bigger V2s and stuff. Which, my first ever playthrough of Hearts of Iron. <laughs> it was quite the show. So I was playing with Germany. Um, this was when I was still in middle school. So, a couple years back. Early on in the game, before many DLC was out. I actually, I don't even think the, deal, the game really had DLC at this point. Um... I was playing as Germany, and I was winning World War II. I had taken Britain through, I believe, a civil war. If not, I had already taken Britain. I invaded Denmark, Greenland. I had Panzer armies rolling through Russia. I think Russia was close to or had already capitulated. I owned Europe and Africa and was moved through India. I was moving in on the Pacific. And then I navally invaded Canada. And by the end of me being able to play that save i had taken this far into canada i think this is quebec yeah i had taken like all of quebec i had started to take saint lawrence new brunswick what and whatnot and then i had pushed into maine and as soon as i got u.s airfields i had researched v2s so i had massive bombing flights going in the u.s and then i was just building tons of v2s at this point so i just started rocketing the americans to death <laughs> it was actually um I thought it was quite enjoyable. Um, the death of Rama the Fifth, King. Oh, Germany mobilizes. Oh, improved oil drilling. So we'll. Oh God, we'll read through these real quick. With the King of Kingdom of Portugal being highly destabilized in the respect he, in the re recent years by British pressure on Portugal's colonies, the royal family's expenses, and the regicide of King Carlos and the heir apparent proponents of the Republic have taken advantage of the situation, proclaiming a Republic on the 3rd of October 1910, with 2,000 soldiers and sailors rebelling. A provisional government led by Tio Flio Braga have deposed the constitutional monarchy and have called for Manuel II to be exiled from Portugal. Interesting. And then our oil drilling. And then Germany is mobilizing with where in it. The German Im Empire has called for general mobilization with reserve divisions across the country ready for action. The men seem rather, rather confident that the war will be over by at least but Christmas. Ah, the age-old foolish notion that a war will be over by Christmas. How many times has that worked out, Germany? 
France, huh, guys? Like, we're over by Christmas, right? 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 Am I? Am I? Am I right? <laughs> I don't think there's been a single war in history that's been over by Christmas, unless you're looking at. Well, they don't exist yet, but Israel right here, they finished a war in six days. They know what's up when it comes to a quick war. Beat four nations in six days. Quite the achievement. Um, King Chula Longkorn of Siam, also known as Rama V, passed away today at the M4 and Sothen Residential Hall in the Dusit Palace, being succeeded by his son, Var... Vahir... Vahiravad? Vahiravad? Hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. Chulong Korn's achievements and accomplishments for the nation art he loved so much were incredible. Now the people of Siam can only hope that their next ruler may be, be more like our last. An unfortunate passing. And then what do we want to get next for technology? We'll keep going down, because I think this is the main one we can do right now. We'll keep going down engineering. We'll get torpedo protection, or propulsion, not protection. Sorry. Used to rule the waves. Um, I have a series of that up. If anyone wants to watch it, please feel free. Let's see. Got the American military here. First freight flight landing in Columbus. Oh. Landing in Columbus, Ohio. Midday, the world's first air delivery occurred as a Wright Flyer Model B delivered a shipment of silk for the opening of a new store in the state capital. All right. So, the modern economy is slowly starting to form. <laughs> And this will be the economy we will take with us all the way until 2060. And we don't want less civilian factory speed, so we'll get that. And now we'll have like a 25% increase on infrastructure build speed. And we're all the way down to South Carolina already. So we're, we're moving ahead at a pretty good rate. I'm confident with it, but over here, I mean, this is still unusual. Kingdom of France, they're... They're going to lose over time. There's there's no two ways about it. They're getting pushed back. They have Paris. What, where's their capital even at? Nantes? Nantes? Oh, there, that's Monaco. Okay, Monaco and then Andorra hits. Plague hits China. Having started out as a small outbreak in the province of Manchuria, plague is spread across China. It is known... How It is not known how this plague was first contracted, but it boasts a near 100% mortality rate and has affected the wider Chinese population, including the capital, Peking. Peking? Peking? I, I don't know. Chinese. Chinese nonsense. Um, us over here in the good American em empire know how to write words in the proper English fashion. The, the la language that will become the world language over course of years. Ottoman Empire declared war on the Ottoman Empire. Okay. Um, they're the sick man of Europe. Less division organization and recovery. It must be because they're like the dying empire right now and that's what they're known as. Earthquake. At, at 11 p.m. local time, a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake struck Russian Turkestan. Local reports indicated that almost all the city of Alma-Ada has been flattened along with 452 people being killed by landslides. Now that is quite the travesty. My uh, condolences to the Russian population. I guess you should not have sided with um, your government. You should join the welcoming arms of America over here in wherever Turkestan is. Turkestan, Turkestan, Turkestan. Can't find it. Alaska's now a state. Welcome, Alaska. Anyone in Alaska, I've now welcomed you into the Union. Um, soon this Union will be an empire of my own will that will spread across the world. But as of right now, it's, it's just the normal USA. Wish there were options to just give more pieces of the world statehood. Oh, the Mataristas. Missouri State Capitol building. Da -da -da. I don't want to read all these, so... There you go. The Mataristas are dead. It's one of the things with the Civil Wars is they don't always pop off properly. I just realized that we never gave all of my fleets an admiral. So the Atlantic fleet will get our best commander because it's the largest fleet. Followed by the Pacific fleet because it's going to end up being our second largest fleet. Asiatic. And then the submarine flotillas. 
And then, let's see here. It's 1911. Let's start getting you some better artillery technology, boys. Improve the nation's military a bit. Hand grenades are still off. So are rifles. So we'll get better MPs. And then we'll design our navy in the meantime. So you. Um, no crabs. I want no crabs in this submarine group. No random subs. And then... 25 submarines. And this will be a... We'll use German names. Wolfpack. Just because Wolfpack's a cool name for a submarine force. So, we'll use it. We'll steal it. Um, the good old American way of appropriation. And we'll get rid of... Our... Oh, International Women's Day. Do -do -do. Get back in the kitchen. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Um... You're gonna note. You're gonna notice right here. I tend to build massive fleets, um, so I don't have fleet op operations everywhere. But where I do, I have complete dominance, which is generally the strategy I like to go for. Complete dominance over every theater I can get. Uh, we'll do destroyers. We'll get 80 of them. Five, ten, twenty, forty, eighty. Doubling it, and then carriers will have three when they come out. And this will be a battle fleet. And then you. We'll lower you down by that. Up. Oh, and then ten. Destroyers will have twenty. And this will be a patrol group. So as you can see, even my patrolling units are, are quite the force to be reckoned with. Um, and I didn't save any of my other compositions. I forgot to do that bit, so we'll save that. There we go. And the submarines will save the wolf pack. And then once we get a lot more submarines, we'll increase the size of stuff like that. Um, patrol group. Patrol group. Sometimes the AI does wig out now with um, how you do things. And a battle fleet. And a battle fleet. And this will leave a lot of open battleships to replace any losses we may, mayhaps, mayhaps have. And these submarines, the crabs, will outfit you all with mine warfare. And there's those mine laying tubes I was telling you guys about. And then the E-Class, we will also upgrade to have more torpedoes. There we go. And then let's see. Refit. Yep, here it goes. So, till we build our own new cruisers, the battleships are gonna, or the, the cruisers are gonna wig out. They always do. Oh, we have research going. <laughs> My bad. Uh. Yeah, the cruisers always decide to wig out. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if it's a man the guns issue or a mods issue or, or what the, what that's all about. But they just they don't want to stay put, so they just go back and forth and they just play tiddlywinks over there. And I just kind of it's not worth the bother to dig into anything about it. Like I don't know how to code, so I couldn't fix it. So we just leave it and we just do this. Click uh, default map mode and ignore it most of the time. Only issue is, is I think my battleships are doing it too. So. We will check to see. Oh, we've got free dockyards. Hold up. Before we check to see. We'll do this. We'll upgrade all of our productions. Uh, okay, so all of our cruisers are of the same classes right now. 
not all of our cruisers, but like our light, our light and our armored cruisers. So our light cruisers are what they need to be and our armored cruisers are what they need to be. So we'll see. I've never done this before, so it might not work, but guns, 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 shield, shield, and then you'll be planes. And we'll save that as the new battle fleet. And then the patrol group will do guns, shield, shield. I want to see if this fixes it. Never delved into fixing it before, so. Guns, shield, shield, save. And then if I click battle fleet, guns, 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 shield, shield, plane. So that composition should be saved now. Battle fleet, there we go. Oh. Nope, it just deleted a fleet. Okay, so if you reorganize your fleet, they have a stroke. Oh, my bad, I didn't let you guys read those. I am so sorry. So, let's see, we've got the Atlantic, got the Pacific. So we will send you to there. Merge. There we go. Nope. Merge. 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 And hopefully this fixes it once they're all merged onto the same location. Yes. Okay. So that did. Apparently, I will merge you again. This seems to have solved the problem that I was facing. They're not ready, not ready, not ready. Like I said, I'm giving up no territorial possessions. And I'll let this be decided by you guys whether or not we just double the fleets because I'm sitting on 20 battleships or just make four new battle groups. Um, we'll take all heavy cruisers. We'll assign you. Nice. Yo, nice knife, dude. Holy shit. I have no idea what that was. I am now very confused. Um, I guess OBS tried to do its, its own Thing. Not sure. Um, we're going to put you there, and we'll make you into a patrol group. And we'll send you here. A new theater. Oh, no, not new theater. New fleet. And you will now be the Asiatic fleet. Asiatic fleet. Albert Winter Chair. Oh, maybe, okay, so you probably can't assign them when they're out of base. That's what's going to be the new assumption. And then we've got planes, but I'm going to wait till we have 50 planes in reserve. Um, oh, man. We're at like 35 minutes already. Okay, so I'll give it a little bit. I'll wait till we reorganize this fleet, and then I think that'll be... A good cutoff for the first bit. Bonus artillery and military police. Um, yeah, we'll just do no template. Can we do no template for you? Nope, because you're a reserve fleet. Alright. Cool, cool. 
mortar attachment. Ahead of time, ahead of time. Researching, ahead of time. More artillery. So, I think I fixed the normal. Oh, nope. There it is. Where are you at? Are you in Manila now? If not, I'm just going to decommission all of these that are causing the issue. Fleet. Winter chair. Automatic split off. Automatic repairs. Uh, we will give you patrol group. Nope. Okay. Yep. So. I guess the Asiatic fleet is just no more. Who would have thunk? Um. I wouldn't have, but uh, it seems to be about where everything is, so. And this will be a mine. These will be our mine laying subs. And we'll save them. And then, General Staffer. Get you, oh, okay, political power up. So, yeah. All right, cool, cool. It looks like I have most things under control now. I would, I would think so. I tried to recreate the navy and make that do its own thing, and then we were gonna do that as the last bit of the episode, but it didn't really want to work with. Oh, uh, yeah. See. They're all classified as light cruisers, so they are problematic. So, can we, how do we decommission? Decommission, decommission, decommission. Create a new force, so we can click these five. Delete task force. Yep, okay. All right? Yes. Okay. I think that's all their issues. So, um, that's where I'll wrap it up. Since I said I'd do it after I fix my naval issues, we've only gone a year because of that. Messing around with the Navy and whatnot, reading stuff. I don't think I'm going to read as much next time, just because, I mean, we only got a year through. We haven't really done anything yet. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I, as always, have been your Field Marshal, Vermont Gaming. Let me know in the comments what you want me to do with these battleships, if you want me to make four beautiful new battle groups to be filled up, or just double the size of the old ones. And with that, um, have a nice day everyone, I'll see you all again soon.